Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this guide on how to install Feed the Beast Interactions and other Curse Forge slash Feed the Beast mod packs onto MultiMC. So I will have a link in the description for both MultiMC and the example Feed the Beast Interactions, uh, as well as we're going to be hosting a server uh, to later on today actually for Feed the Beast Interactions that's open for the public so you guys can join us if you'd like. So MultiMC, first you want to download it and uh, you'll click download and install and at the bottom you'll get the version you require. Of course this guide is going to be based on Windows but you're more than free to use any version you want and uh, you should download the stable if you like to be a little more risque and like to report bugs. The uh, development edition is great too but uh, you want to use it, you want to stay in touch with the devs and keep an eye on GitHub, etc. So we'll download the 3264 here. It says 32 slash 64, but I don't actually know if there's a 64 version or if it just downloads whatever. So we're going to move the browser window over here to the side right now. We'll remove my recording window over here. And here you go. So you got MultiMC. Now I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. So I actually have this on another uh, screen. We're just going to dump it in here and we're going to call it uh, the test. And so you just want to extract it. Uh, if you're using the default Windows uh, zip thing, it'll actually look like a folder like this uh, instead, you know, um, to extract it instead. And you just throw it in a folder or whatever. But uh, I have 7-zip, so it looks a bit different. So once you're in here, all you do is open MultiMC and you select your settings. So you would want Java uh, 8. 64-bit uh, edition uh, installed. If you want to know how to do that, you really should know how to. And uh, you can easily Google uh, videos on that if you really need it. Um, but you just need to go and download them. It's pretty simple. I have a bit of an older version here, but it's not a big deal. So basically, you just want to make sure it says 64 and pick the highest version out of it. Um, and uh, I'm happy with that, and it's uh, starred there. So minimum and maximum memory allocation. This This is a step that you should just set right away because you're going to be sorry uh, if you don't do this. So uh, most mod packs are pretty heavy. So I could go 4096, for example, and then your maximum, you probably want, say, 6,000. Uh, so what you can do is open the calculator for fun. I'm not a smart guy all the time with math. And you do 1024 times 6. You don't have to have it like this, but I like it. So it's 6,000. 144 and I don't know why I don't memorize that I mean I I've had it so much in my head over time 4096 there you go I screwed up somewhere there and that way you get a bit of a buffer now sometimes people say it's nice to run it without the buffer but I find that's more on servers and clients I like to have the little buffer there um, but uh, you, it's not a big deal if you set both min and max at the around the same amount uh, you don't want to set it to say if you have 32 gigs of RAM which I do you don't want to set it to like 16 gigs because when the garbage collection hits it's gonna hit hard and you're gonna feel it uh, you can enable analytics basically they just get some information etc to help them work on their development and there you go so there's multi MC and we have it up and if you want to create a shortcut to your desktop all you have to do is hold right click and drag it to your desktop and create shortcut here and mine is going to be called two because well I already have one in, on my desktop already uh, so the next thing is we're going to grab uh, the feed the beast interactions mod pack so our server is going to be starting out with hopefully 1.5 unless there's an update like just before we launch uh, so for the example here we're going to grab the latest now uh, it's a beta build so basically what this means is it's considered slightly unstable it might go boom on you but usually not too bad Anyway, so we're going to click the download here over the right side, and it's going to download the mod pack. Now, this is a pretty hefty mod pack because um, they have quite a few. Uh, they have a big, like, audio track or maybe two or three of them. And on top of that, they have um, kind of like the screenshots, you know, the splash, just, you know, the intro kind of thing. So it just it uses a lot of uh, basically uh, space. This is what I'm going to go with. I'm a little tired. It is 4.43, 4.44 in the morning. But I thought I'd make a quick guide on this because I know some people could use it. So we're going to once again open the zip file here. And of course, it's doing the darn check. There you go. And we'll get rid of you again. And here we go. So I opened it and that was already a mistake. Probably shouldn't have opened it. So if you do mistakes like I did, which is okay, you can just hit the three dots here, go downloads. And what you want to do is grab this and drag it on here. So... 
if you go here and grab it like that, there you go. You could have done that from the bottom as well. It will show this little window and you're going to go OK. And then basically what it's going to do is it'll probably lag for a second and then it should show up a window. They're not responding. And then it's going to start extracting the mod pack. So first it'll extract the mod pack and then it will start downloading uh, the mods off of Curse itself. And uh, so it's resolving the mod ideas. And now it should be slowly starting the download process. Of course, you might have to wait an hour. <laughs> there you go, downloading the mods. Now my internet is pretty horrendous, so this will probably take a long longer. I think the mod pack is like in the 250 megabyte range or so. So it, it kind of adds up um, a bit, of course, once it downloads all of them. But uh, yeah, it'll start doing its thing. And uh, once it's done, then you can go ahead and launch it. So uh, we'll just wait here for a second. I'll make this a bit more painful for you guys. But I have a, a plan B. So I have another instance of multi-MC here. And we're going to just hide this one away. Oh, okay, we can't hide you away. Fine, be there. Um, I guess you could do go like, oh, no, we're not doing that at all. Okay, so this is my other instance of multi-MC. And I have version 1.5 here already. Though I have ran it a couple of times, I have also my version 1.4.1 1 .1 here. So you're wondering how do you go ahead and upgrade and update? Well, it's actually the same thing. Basically, you don't go and there's no like update, or at least not that I know of yet. Um, what you do is basically, oh, that's the client, by the way, not the, <laughs> not the mod pack. Um, what you do is you actually install another instance. So you would literally go ahead and you would drag your zip file on here and it would create a new one, which I had, the 1.5. But what you do now is you right click here and you go to the Minecraft folder. And the Minecraft folder is important. This is, you can tell this is an instance that's been launched because it has a lot of data on it, right? So you want to copy some configurations over. So for example, if you deleted dynamic lights, which I did, so if you go to mods and type in dynamic lights, it's gonna beep at you because I got rid of it. What I installed instead was Optifine, and I also uh, added a client-side potion icon remover because there's icons at the top right, didn't like it. So those are included. So what I do is I end up copying these and I go to my other instance. Now, uh, since this one's up and running, I'm going to show it on here. So just pretend this is all on the same multi-MC screen. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're going to right click here and we're going to go to the Minecraft folder. As you're going to see, this is beautiful. It's naked. It's brand spanking new. So what I'm going to do is literally copy my Optifine and Potion uh, mods. So if you have mods you installed, you want to make sure you copy them over. And if you want to delete one, so Optifine has a built-in better, smoother, dynamic lights mod. So I'm going to go here and delete dynamic lights. Boom, gone. I'm happy. So we're just going to go back to the root here. Uh, the next thing you want to uh, copy over is any config. So for example, uh, one probe, I had changed the configs because it was on the left side, so was the map. So what we're going to type is one probe. Oh, I think it's called the one probe. So we're going to copy our one probe over here. And then we're going to copy the uh, map data. Now the map data is a little more exciting. So if we hit X something, you can see uh, X arrow waypoints, world map. You can copy and paste those in here and those will add in there. And they don't have, these are just the data. This is just the base data. So what you're gonna have to do is also find the config files here. So uh, the mini map and the world map, this is their other config files and you wanna copy them in here. And there you go. And then on the root, if you have a server list, uh, so for example, you play on a server or whatever, uh, you don't want to type all the information again, copy, paste the server dot over. And then you want to copy over your options file as well and paste them in. But here's another key. If you use Optifine, make sure you get the options file called options of, because that will allow you to, uh, that, that contains the Optifine uh, files basically, the uh, or sorry, the config files. And then of course, here's your options one, which has all my options here as well. And so that will keep your bindings, your hotkeys, your settings. This will keep your one probe position. This will also keep the one probes like the Wela. Uh, this will also deal with your mini map uh, and its coordinates and everything else as well. Oh, and one bigger thing. Probably should have mentioned this. Um, sorry, I don't play uh, single player usually, but also copy your save. So 
Uh, if you're playing single player or have some saves, you copy and paste your save over. And of course, there you go. Here's a tip. Leave your old instance there. Why? Because if the new update isn't the best or you make a mistake, etc., you have it there. So do copy and paste. Control C, Control V. Right click, copy, Control R, and then right click, paste. It doesn't matter. Keep your old instance there. Don't move the files. Copy the files over and you're golden. And then basically all you have to do is launch it. So, you know, for example, this was our new instance. We just double click. And in order to play, you're going to say, would you like to log into your account manager? And then basically you'll add your account. Now, some people might not feel safe for this. I think there's like literally hundreds of thousands of people who use a multi MC. It's pretty damn safe. You enter your information, you enter your password. So this is your actual Mojang account, right? So this isn't your uh, whatever account or a special account. This is Mojang. They don't they don't get any of your data. They don't you know, take it away from you. So you enter your your email. I think pretty much everyone's an email now. Your password, you log in. You can have multiple accounts, so you can switch them really easy. And then that's it. You're in. And you're set to go. So hopefully, you know, I know it was a little longer of a guide, but I wanted to explain how you would do an update. And I hope, hopefully that made sense to you guys. And hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Might have missed something here and there. But you get the gist on how to copy your files back and forth. And uh, that should save you some time. And it'll also let you update uh, a mod pack easily uh, without any too, uh, without too many worries. Of course, depending on the mod pack, maybe there's other config settings that you change particular. But you should know better if you've changed a config setting more likely you know what config that was and you'll be able to copy it over as well. So thank you guys and girls so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and we'll see wonderful people next time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.